Well, let's go straight to Israel. And Ina Lazareva is a journalist in Tel Aviv and can join us with the absolute latest on what's going on. Ina, you're very welcome to Talk TV. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning. Um, it must be very scary for you and your family at the moment. Is everybody around you OK? Yes, everyone is fine. I've been a foreign correspondent here for many years and this is by far the, the most terrifying war I've been through. But everyone around me is OK. The streets are deserted. Uh, you, you hear police cars, ambulances rushing past. The kindergartens, the school are, schools are closed. But we are in central Israel. The real uh, action at, the, at present is still in the south of the country where there are actually active gunfights still going on. There are hostages being, uh, being held by Hamas gunmen. There are families who are looking for their missing relatives and friends. There's a lot of tragedy all around. There really is. I was chatting to a friend this morning who has family in Israel and his son is actually volunteering for the army. I know that all men in Israel are, are, are army reservists anyway, but that is something that's someone sort of slightly older. So yes, I mean, we, ha we know that at least 250 Israelis and more than 230 Palestinians are dead. I mean, that is an astonishing death toll in a really, really short period of time. How did this happen in a uh, it, it took the whole country completely by surprise. You know, me, like many people, were woken up yesterday morning at 6.30 by an air raid siren. And at first I thought someone just pushed the wrong button. I mean, nothing... It was a surprise to you. <laughs> Yeah, it was a complete surprise, and it was a surprise to so many people I interviewed. They were they were sleeping. Their children woke them up, and suddenly they found themselves running uh, to the to the shelter if they had one in their house, or running downstairs into the basement to uh, to hide. Many of them were completely unprepared. People didn't have food or water. Some ended up staying in that room for nine to ten hours until they were evacuated out. Yeah, it is, it is a very fast-moving situation. What sort of leadership has been provided by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who is, remains a very controversial character, but presumably Israel uh, feels, there feels like solidarity, uh, certainly when these things happen? Yes, uh, certainly there's a lot of uh, feeling of solidarity from abroad. Uh, the role of the Prime Minister Netanyahu is very, very controversial, as you say, to say, to say the least. In fact, many people in Israel are blaming Mr Netanyahu for, for the current situation, primarily because um, it is perceived that Hamas took advantage of the fact that the country is deeply, deeply divided. Mm. You know, Israelis have been protesting out on the streets every week, consistently since the beginning of this year, uh, uh, some who are angry at the government's proposed judicial reform. So this just tell us a little bit about those judicial reforms. I want to get back to the the, the, the warlike situation in a minute while Benjamin Netanyahu says they are at war with Hamas. But tell us why people have been protesting in the streets on those judicial reforms. Just explain that a little bit to us to give yes. us context to all of this in it. Judicial reforms plan are uh, um, the plan of uh, Mr. Netanyahu's government, which, as you know, is the most right-wing and extremist in the country's history. They're planning to completely overhaul the, the country's uh, legal structure, uh, amending some of the key laws that are taking place. And so uh, many people see this as a direct attack on Israeli democracy and have been out in the streets protesting against this. So because More Israel is divided, there are um, thoughts that perhaps Hamas took advantage of this. The question I want to ask about Hamas is we always hear about how much poverty there is in Gaza and I've been to uh, some of those uh, what are called refugee camps but actually there are people who are you know have built built homes there and I wonder if there is so much poverty in Gaza where on earth are they getting the money for these rockets for this firepower for Hamas to uh, attack Israel? Well, it's, that's quite and it's been clear for quite some time and they're, they're getting the money from Iran yeah. Iran is financing a lot of the the military capabilities of Hamas while the ordinary people are suffering in fact the ordinary people of Gaza are now paying the price because Israel's cutting off the electricity it's very likely it's uh, it's it has already blocked um, access of uh, food and fuel and other things. And let's not forget, there were 20,000, around 20,000 Palestinian workers coming into Israel, earning money every day uh, from Gaza until this happened. Now, of course, this has stopped. That means people are not getting their livelihoods. They're not able to lead normal lives. And they're facing a barrage of stri Israeli retaliatory strikes as we speak right now with very few places to hide. Uh, Gaza is a tiny sliver of land. There's, there's, very, there's really no way to go. So the ordinary people, as always, are paying the price on both sides. On the Israeli side, it's the civilians now who are stuck and uh, hold up. They, some have been kidnapped, some have been killed. Mm. No one knows where their relatives are. And in Gaza as well, there are strikes on high-rise buildings all over the Strip. And uh, men, women and children who have nothing to do with this are paying the price. What do you think will happen now, Anna? 
I think uh, it can go in two ways, and I fear the worst. Uh, this morning we had an escalation um, in the form of uh, some mortar shells fired from uh, Israel's northern Le uh, neighbor, Lebanon. Um, there, the militant group Hezbollah is de facto in charge. This is very, very bad news. Israel has already started retaliating to this mortar fire, but if things kick off there, it could open up a second front, and Hezbollah is much, much more uh, uh, well-armed than mm -hmm. Hamas, and they can inflict a much bigger damage. This can also draw in other actors into, into this war, which could escalate. So we all hope, hope and pray this will not be the case.